June 2021, Siskiyou County Water Users Association hired a full-service land and bathymetric surveying company to conduct sonar studies in the Klamath River system. The studies verified the existence of natural and major lava dikes, which are barriers to fish migration, including salmon. These lava dike barriers also proved to be an ideal locations for creating reservoirs with lake habitat and hydroelectric facilities providing clean, green, renewable energy for decades. In this video, you will see footage from the sonar survey and learn of the importance of the lava dikes, the ancient lakes, the forests and unique biomes, the ecosystem and rich habitat that exist, living in harmony with the community and people who live there today. Hello folks, thank you for joining us today. My name is Richard Marshall. I'm president of the Siskiyou Water Users Association out of Wairika, California, a group of citizens who are dedicated to preserving the water rights of the ranchers and farmers in the area together with the rights of the citizens of Copco Lake and in particular to preserve for the future the hydroelectric facilities that are currently owned by Pacific Corp on the Klamath River. And I have with me today uh, Bob Rice who I'm going to talk to in just a minute but before I introduce Bob I wanted to uh, backdrop where we are today. You've had an opportunity at this point to see the work being done by statewide surveying. We are statewide land surveying. We're a private land surveying firm in Gresham, Oregon, next to Portland. My name is Elisa Orr, and I am the project manager on site. My name is Will Butler. I'm a GIS technician. I'm John Franklin, statewide remote captain, U.S. Coast Guard certified. We are at, this is Copco Reservoir in California, in Siskiyou County, and we are surveying the underwater topography near the deadline of the dam. So we expect to be able to fully map the bottom, get confidence in the shape of the bottom topography and the depth below water level at this time, and reference it to an elevation as well. So we have brought down our multi-beam unit and this is a sonar unit. The sonar head is submerged underwater and it's attached to this pole that has two GPS antennas. So what we do is we scan the bottom and we get depth measurements all along the bottom. That's what the multi-beam does. It shoots up literally multiple beams of sonar readings to the bottom and we return depths so we can map the topography of the bottom of the reservoir and we can position it using these GPS antennas. We have the data logging software on the computer where we log the data and we do quality control checks. And then we have our base station over on the shoreline to position us in the world. The bathymetric sonar survey that was done to locate specifically lava dikes, which were referenced by J.C. Boyle in his documents when he did the hydroelectric dams in that area. We set about doing this study because we wanted to identify the position of these lava dikes as, as a great deal of significance, which we're going to talk about. Bob Rice is trained as a silviculturist and uh, experienced on 11 different national forests. He also was the former head of the Klamath National Forest, uh, some 3 million acres, appointed by the President's Advisor, the Secretary of Interiors. He was also responsible in the Klamath River for the formation of the Wild and Scenic River designation that it enjoys. Uh, Bob is a student of history, he's a student of geology, a student of everything having to do with these rivers. We couldn't have a better expert and that's why he's with Siskiyou Water Users as our science advisor in this area. As part of this uh, survey process, why was it important to locate the presence of these dikes? Well, for a long, long time, we have been reading in different chapters. J.C. Boyle's 50 Years on the Klamath as an example, where he talks about some type of cross-channel igneous rock weir. And in further study of that particular proposal that J.C. Boyle made, the results were that we not only located the dikes in the Siskiyou County, but we also found three other dikes that were part of controlling the natural flow of the Klamath River. Uh, but what specifically is important about these dikes? These dikes have, are related to uh, hydroelectric facilities that got located in the general area, and in particular Copco 1, 
uh, J.C. Boyle, selected the location because of the dike that was there that he found. Can you tell us a little bit about that dike? Well, the location of the dikes is significant because that was the opportunity to look at the geological structure that lies on the river flow and can support a certain structure that could aid in the development of water resources for the importance of the necessary hydroelectric work that J.C. Boyle recommended for the use of the Klamath River. Now speaking about J.C. Boyle and his uh, identification in his engineering record reports as well as 50 years on the Klamath, he talks about actually the location of Copco 1. I think it's significant because he actually was going to place the dam in a different location than he ended up in placing it in. And what was important, as I understand it, is J.C. Boyle identified the remnants. When he got there, at that time, there were still the remnants of Lake Clamity behind approximately a 31-foot uh, dike that was still remaining, which at that point was still too high for salmon to jump over. And that was in 1913 or something like that. Yes, in the research that we examined uh, as to the location of dikes, the first one that we examined was Copco. And at Copco Reservoir, there was a facility that had been modified. And in that modification, started storing water that particular dike, when it was patched up and used, provided water to generate power at Fall Creek. What was the name of that power company? We, we, we often refer to it as Topco, uh, Siskiyou Energy and yeah, Power Company. Right. They had, they had built a small correct dam there, which they were using at the time. They yes. patched the dike in order to utilize it at a higher level. And because they patched the dike, they started getting a, a storage of water that ultimately led to the development of Copco Lake Reservoir. Right, and then there was something significant though that J.C. Boyle uh, discovered when he was deciding to put the dam initially where the uh, original dike was, but then he moved it back a thousand feet. What was important about that? Decision? In his literature, uh, of studying the footage of that particular uh, dike that was being used by the Siskiyou uh, County Power and Electric Company. Uh, the foundation was not strong enough to build the size of a reservoir that he wished to have built to generate far more power that was just being produced by Falk Creek. So the so what he wanted to do is he want as as Siskiyou County grew and as Southern Oregon and Northern California grew, he wanted an opportunity to spread hydroelectric power to those two parts of the two states. Now one of the things I think was also very significant in the studies that we found was the relationship of these ancient dikes and the height in particular, for example. As I recall, the uh, Copco 1 area where he eventually located the dam, originally there was a 135-foot uh, waterfall, in effect, over that particular dike that wore down over a period of time. But when uh, he, he got there, J.C. Boyle, he decided that was the most perfect place to place this dam because of the way the walls of the basaltic rock came together in that point and it was perfect for him. But one can see, and I know you've been out there to see it yourself, when you stand on one of those banks and look, look across to the other side, across Copco 1, you can see in your own mind's eye, you can see the height of that original uh, waterfall, which must have been a fabulous thing to see at the time. In J.C. Boyle's 50 Years on the Climate, he discusses the a fault existing with the location of the Siskiyou County Power Facility. Right. And that fault was the basalt base of that particular dike. Mm -hmm. And so he then decided, hey, I'm going downriver about a thousand feet because I know there's another 
good dike opportunity uh, in the Klamath Canyon area. And at that particular point, he just he soared up and studied the basalt footage and all of the ignitious, ignitious flows of rocks that were on top of it so that he had an opportunity to not only build one utility, but to use that same utility of water storage to also do Copco too. And it's pretty clear there's a channel running through there, and that was the ancient channel we're talking about that was uh, originally 135 feet high, uh, worn down, of course, over time, but still a hazard for salmon to get over. As you can see on these two particular charts, and the significance of the upper dike was on Copco Lake, and the significance of the lower dike on Iron Gate. So, so the key to this then is the fact that because this particular dike, salmon who are known to be able to jump somewhere in the neighbor of 12 to 15 feet, if they get a good run, mm -hmm. were unable to go beyond this particular point upriver uh, to uh, the different source, tributary sources of water in the state of Oregon that as a result of the location of these two dikes, it was easy to go ahead and use those two locations to expand two reservoirs, mm -hmm. Copco Reservoir and Iron Gate Reservoir. And because they were able to uh, expand those, you added biomes of vegetation that were significant to the establishment of different kinds of vegetation, different kinds of wildlife, different kinds of fish, different kinds of birds. One of the significant finds that we made as a result of our studies is the existence of the ancient lakes behind these dikes and what, what ties into today's reservoirs, for example, Iron Gate Reservoir and Copco Reservoir, actually cover over what was originally these ancient lakes. And what uh, Mr. Rice is referring to here now is about the attributes of those uh, ancient lakes being still prominent in today's world and the significant amount of study that was done by our team to uh, exploring the issue of Beswick Forest and cultural area. The significance of these ancient lakes were because of the drainage of ancient Lake Modoc, which was a huge, huge glacier in, in Klamath County. The significance at this particular point in time mm -hmm. was the fact that there, there was silt and other types of uh, good soils that came with the melting of the glacier and they stopped and established themselves at different locations where uh, they could be irrigated, so to speak, by the storage of the different waters that uh, existed at those, at those two ancient lake locations. The ancient lake Modoc, when it started draining, left benches associated with these different antique lakes. And on those particular benches, you would find deep soils and soils, garden type soils, that you could use to plant seeds and raise various kinds of vegetation.